Amen. You can grab a seat. Well, welcome here, whether you're here in person or joining us online. Thanks for being here at Sturgeon Alliance this morning. My name's Josh. I have the joy of being the youth and young adults pastor here, and it has been just an awesome, awesome morning so far. We, see, we saw three people get baptized in our first service, and now we're going to see four others in this service. Matt, Allison, Cassandra, and Cheryl are all going to get baptized this morning, and so it's, it's an exciting morning. Um, now, what I personally love about baptisms, it, baptism Sundays, is that between the baptism candidates um, sharing their testimonies, between those coming up to speak words of encouragement over them, a sermon is taking place within that. The Holy Spirit's working within that. And so instead this morning, before we get into it, I just want to do a brief devotional of what baptism's all about. So you can open up your Bibles to Colossians 2 if you have them. Come to the Word of God and see what it says. Baptism's so important. It's an act of obedience, something Jesus himself modeled. But it's not salvation. It's not a ticket to heaven or even fulfillment of, of this glory happening or anything like that. Baptism is an act of obedience, a symbolic act of something so much greater. Here's what, what the author Paul has to say in Colossians 2, in verse 12. He says, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him when you were raised to new life, because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised you from the dead. Here at Surgeon Alliance, we do what's called immersion baptism. And Paul says that when we're buried with, when we're, uh, that we are buried with Christ when we are baptized, when we go under the water, and then we're raised to new life as we're lifted out. It's death to self, and it's a public declaration that these four are going to claim this morning, that, that they trust in the mighty power of God, that they want to follow Jesus, that they've been raised to new life with Christ. It's not a matter of self-perfection, a matter of obeying the work that Jesus is doing within each one of them. Colossians goes on to say, um, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ for he forgave all our sins. Each one of us is, is dead in our sins. And in the act of baptism, we're raised to new life. But that work of forgiveness of sins, of being more like Jesus, that comes from Jesus himself. It comes from the, the work that he did on the cross through his resurrection just a few weeks ago, we celebrated Easter and celebrated our chance to encounter the resurrected Christ. And this morning, we're going to hear from and celebrate with four people who have, who have encountered the resurrected Jesus in mighty ways. My prayer for each one of you this morning is that you too, in, the, in hearing these testimonies and hearing these words of encouragement, that you too would encounter the resurrected Jesus. Now, this morning, we're going to witness three individuals who are seeking to die to self, to, to be raised to new life in Christ, take the plunge and seek to look more and more like Jesus. So, this is how this is going to look. It's a little bit different this morning. We're going to have the candidates come up, um, and, and, and three of them are going to be baptized. One of them, we actually, Pastor Brent and I already went and uh, baptized Cheryl, and you'll see a video of that, but Cheryl's still going to come and share a testimony a little bit here. But the, the candidates are going to share their testimonies. They're going to share why they're here, what, how Jesus is working in their lives. And then there will be a chance to encourage them, to speak a, a Bible verse over them, to pray over them. And each one of them has chosen someone who's going to close that time. But there will be an open mic to give opportunity to those who would like to share still. So with that, I want to pray to kick us off here. And then Allison's going to come on in the tank. So let me pray first, and then we'll do that. Jesus, you are good. Lord, we thank you that we get to celebrate with these four individuals this morning. We thank you that we have celebrated already with three individuals. And, oh, Lord, it's just been such an awesome morning. Jesus, would our eyes be focused on you as we continue to celebrate these baptisms? Lord, you're good. We pray these things in your name. Amen. All right, Miss Allison and Allison's dad, come on up. So Allison is in grade six this year. She's been coming to Ignite. You guys can pop your masks off in the tank there. Can everyone say hi, Allison? Um, and and if, if you are going to speak some words of encouragement for Allison, you can already line up and get ready there. Um, but in the meantime, Allison, why don't you share with us your testimony? How did you come to know Jesus? Um, 
I realized one day after church that I wanted to be part of the Lord and um, come to him, and that's how I wanted to. That's awesome. That's really good. We're so glad you are. So with that, if, you, if anyone wants to come up and, and share a word of encouragement for Allison, that would be awesome. Hi, Allison. <laughs> um, Allison knows me as Mrs. Foster from school, and uh, she knows me from here too, of course. Um, but it's been a privilege getting to know her a little bit more um, through different things at school. And I've just seen what just what a beautiful young lady she's becoming. And Allison, I just wanted to really encourage you to just to keep walking with the Lord. And um, this is such a great step you're taking today. And uh, yeah, so God bless you as you continue on your journey. Hey, Allison, it is so good to see you up there as well. I get to uh, share uh, Ignite with her. She's in my group this year, and I just love uh, hearing from you, uh, just your words of wisdom and uh, your desire to serve uh, the Lord in this way. And uh, yeah, I'm excited for Ignite to get back at it full swing and just to be able to get to know you more. And yeah, may God bless you and continue in this walk. Allison, let me fix this mic first, get a little higher. You bring such a joy and light to Ignite, and I, and I thank you for that. You just always have a smile on your face, and I can tell even under your mask, your eyes are just smiling away. And so keep bringing that smile, keep bringing that light of Jesus everywhere you go from here. Not, not just at Ignite, not just at church, but at school with your family. Keep, keep representing him. It's awesome. Thanks, Allison. If I can, uh, is this on? If I can say a few things before Joyce does. Um, Allison, this is one of the few days as a parent where it means a lot. The day we held you in the hospital, we got to bring you home was the beginning of a journey. And we're very proud of you as your parents. And uh, we're really um, grateful for the person you're becoming. And uh, your spirit and uh, the way you love the Lord. So, go ahead, Joyce. Hi, Al. Hi, Allison. Um, I researched the meaning of your name, Allison. Your name means that you are of divine and holy fame. Did you know that? And that's true because you are a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You're publicly proclaiming that today, you're publicly proclaiming that today by being baptized. Your name also means truthful, trustworthy, and honorable. These are all qualities of a child of God. Your life is not a coincidence. Every person in all of history was placed in their time and place to fulfill God's purpose. When God created you, he chose you to be born and to live exactly at this time in history. He created you for a purpose, and you are part of his master plan. Your baptism today wasn't a decision that you just randomly came to one day. It's all part of God's plan for your life. You were set apart for him before you were born, and he's drawing you closer to himself each and every day. As you grow and mature, you'll experience many things that'll challenge your faith. Jesus tells his disciples in John chapter 16 that they will have trouble in this world, but to take hope because God has conquered the world. God doesn't promise us an easy and trouble-free life. In fact, it's hard to live our lives for God in this sinful world. There will be many times that you have questions about what you believe to be true. And when you do, I encourage you to talk things over with people that you trust that will be honest with you. I encourage you to talk things over with God every day. Tell him about the doubts that you have. Tell him what makes you afraid and what makes you happy. Remember, 
that you are part of God's master plan. And remember that you are Allison of holy fame because you are a daughter of the king of all kings, God the Father Almighty. Amen. Well, Allison, I got a couple questions for you. Have you repented of your sin, and are you seeking to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you renounce the devil and his works? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Is it your desire to die to self and live in the power of the Spirit? Yes. Upon the profession of your faith, Allison, your dad's now going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God! All right. Now, we have Allison's older brother, Matt, in the tank. Can everyone say, hey, Matt? Well, it's good to have you in here, man. So excited for you. Why don't you share with us how you came to know Jesus? Okay, so I did it a few years ago when I was with um, my grandma Sylvia's. We were at her place and we were talking about God and salvation and that kind of stuff. And that's when I realized it was time that I accepted Jesus and I decided to, but since my faith was young, I kind of wandered away for a while, but now I started coming to stuff like youth group and now I'm drawn closer to Jesus and last October, Pastor Josh asked me about baptism and I thought about it and the next week I said, I think I should. And that's how I came to Yeah, awesome, man. Well, we're so glad you're here. Um, if anyone wants to come speak some words of encouragement for Matt, you can come on up or line up. Um, yeah, it's been a joy, Matt. Hi, Matt. It's me, Leah, from your class. Um, I just want to say that um, I'm super proud of you, and I just can't wait to, and I encourage you to keep on walking with the Lord. Hey, Matt. It's Dalton. Um, like, uh, I'm involved at, or I was involved with, uh, youth, and, uh, got to talk with Matt a few times, and Matt, just to say, man, your imagination is amazing, and wild, and so descriptive, and also glorifies God, and I think it's just so encouraging that, yeah, you just, you come just, just to listen about God, and to hear Josh and whoever else is, um, like, doing a little lesson that night and that you've told me like you get a lot from that and that that's that's amazing i just encourage you man to keep on imagining keep on dreaming keep on like um seeking after the knowledge of the lord because that's the beginning of all wisdom hello matt uh you probably don't know me but i'm from the school my name is bull have you ever heard of me no? Well, here, Bull, pull your mask down a little bit. I just wanted to say um, that I love how you, uh, you came to uh, God through other people in your family, and I love how you actually accepted him because it can be hard for some people. And I know, I know it's hard because I've been through a lot of stuff. And I, want to, I just want to say... Um, that I'm happy for you, and I, and I'm happy for you because you, you walk through Jesus, walk your way through Jesus in your life, and I, and I'm happy for you about that, and we love you, Matt. We're all here for you. Thanks, Paul. Hey, Matt. It's David. I'm here. I told you I would be. <laughs> um, man, it's just such a privilege for me to get to hang out with you every Friday night at youth. Um, I'm so happy for you, Matt. Uh, 
Man, I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I'm so proud of you. I'm really excited to see where God's going to take you. Uh, just keep being yourself. Be awesome. Uh, yeah. Love you, Matt. Hi, Matthew. When you asked me to stand with you as your encourager at your baptism today, it got me thinking about how God made you uniquely you. Your parents named you Matthew Peter. Both Matthew and Peter were disciples of Jesus, so you are in good company. Matthew means gift of God, and you are definitely that, a gift of God. Peter means rock. In spite of all the trials the Apostle Peter encountered and the mistakes he made throughout his life, he remained strong and he never hesitated in his love for Jesus. As you grow and mature, you will come to, into contact with many people who have all kinds of beliefs that differ from what you believe about God. You will likely question your faith. When you become confused about what you believe, talk to someone you trust and always check what you hear against the word of God. I encourage you to be like Peter and never stop loving the God of the Bible and serving him. The scripture verse I chose for you is Jeremiah 29, 11 from the New King James translation. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. How encouraging it is to know that God thinks about you. He thinks about you. When you are going through times of difficulty, remember that God is thinking about you right then. He has thoughts of peace and not of evil. God wants the best for you always, and what's best isn't always the easiest. He wants you to know that he is always there when you are facing trials. Never forget that, Matthew. You are being conformed into God's image. The process began before you were born and will continue throughout your life. You don't know what the future holds for you, but God has a plan for your life. Make the best of each day as it comes and take advantage of the opportunities that come your way. Today you are making a public statement that you are putting your trust and your hope in God. Your baptism today is just one step in your Christian walk, one step with many more to come. You are Matthew Peter, a strong, rock-solid gift from God. Mm. Amen. We'll just go one more, Matt, before, before you get dunked. Somebody stuck in under the wire. Good morning, Matthew. I am so glad to see you in there because we have spoken a lot about baptism when I was working with you through the youth and you have made a very big impression in my life. You have poured into my life and I will always be grateful to have known you and I know that I know that God is going to use that great imagination that you have to serve him. You're going to reach out a lot of people because God is with you. I will keep on praying for you and never listen to what the world says you are. Always find your identity in Christ because you are a great man of God and he will use you. So I'm so proud of you and I'm so glad you're doing this today. Thank you. All right, Matt, I got a couple questions for you. Have you repented of your sin and are you seeking to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you renounce the devil and his works? Yes. Is it your desire to die to self and live in the power of the Spirit? Yes, it is. Upon the profession of your faith, Matt, your dad's now going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God! Well, here is Cassandra. Cassandra's one of our youth leaders, one of our young adult leaders. She is a practicum student here at the church right now, Act 2 through Vanguard College. Can everyone say, hi, Cassandra? Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you in the tank and getting baptized. It's awesome. I'm excited. 
Cassandra, why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and why you're here, how you came to know Jesus. Okay. Um, yeah, as Josh said, I'm Cassandra. Um, I've been attending Sturgeon Lions for just over four years now, and I love it here. Um, yeah, also like Josh said, I'm a student at Vanguard College uh, doing my degree in theology for youth ministry. Um, so just a little bit about my testimony. Uh, I grew up in a non-Christian household um, with two twin sisters that are older than me, and it's been pretty crazy. Um, so my family was never really close um, throughout my entire life. And um, in high school, I uh, lost my grandmother, and she was one of my best friends, so I took it really hard, and I just found myself in a really dark place, um, and I was invited to a church, so I started attending um, Short Park Alliance um, with a friend, and just at first I didn't feel comfortable at all, um, but as soon as the service started, I just... Uh, felt as though there was like a weight just lifted off, to, off of my shoulders. Um, and a few months later, uh, I started attending here, um, where I just dedicated to follow Jesus. And two years ago, I felt um, called to a discipleship program, um, and that was at Vanguard. Um, and I was just fortunate enough to um, go on two different mission trips. Um, went to East Hastings in Vancouver, and I went to Ethiopia in Africa for a month. And it was incredibly hard on my faith. Um, and I struggled a lot with my relationship with, with Jesus, and um, it just caused a lot of uh, self-doubt for what I was called to do, and if it was the right thing to be doing at the time. Um, and I just really had no idea what God had planned for me. Um, but to my surprise, God went dragging me back to Vanguard, uh, even though I had no idea what I was doing, and um, called me to youth ministry. And um, I'm just super grateful. I love doing grade nine girls, they're awesome. And um, even young adults, I just love plugging in and it's, it's been really great. And I've just learned to just put that trust in God. Um, and doing practicum here with Josh has just been awesome. He told me to throw that in because apparently it's been the best time of my life here. <laughs> Reasonable. <laughs> Um, this year has been a lot of just ups and downs, um, about a year ago to the day, um, my dad was diagnosed with stage four terminal cancer, and, um, so it's been super hard on my family, and he was given six months to live, and just kind of having that feeling of my family not knowing Christ just kind of made me angry and like why is this happening kind of thing um, but yeah I just struggled and just didn't want to come to church and just kind of lost my way um, but with the help of this guy right here um, he dragged me here I just, I'm super grateful for it because my relationship with Jesus is super strong and um, I'm just super grateful for it. Um, on the positive side, um, my sister got married in August and um, shortly after John proposed, so we're getting married in less than two weeks. So I am super excited about that. Um, my dad, was given six months to live, but he is doing super well, and he has managed to have it shrunk about 50% um, just through prayer and 
um, just trying to lead them to Jesus. And um, yeah, I'm just incredibly grateful to have the family that I have and my soon-to-be family. And yeah, I'm just super excited to see where my life takes me to Jesus. So. Mm. Awesome. Well, the mic is open now if anyone wants to come on up and say a few words. And well, somebody's coming up right now. Cassandra, it has been an absolute joy uh, to, to work alongside you just over these past few months uh, as, as a practicum student, but Jesus is working mighty and powerfully in your life, in it and through you, and it has just been just a privilege uh, to serve alongside you. So thank you, and yeah, big, big couple weeks, baptism today, married in like 13 days, yeah. it's going to be awesome. Oh, man. Now I looked at you, and now I got emotional. <laughs> I did not expect that. But thank you, Cassandra. Oh, um, Cassandra, it has been just amazing to be your friend and to see you grow. And when God called you to school right away, you didn't even mention thinking about it. You're like, hey, I'm going to school. <laughs> and you're like, God has called me to this. And, this, and just seeing you um, just rely on God and his strength through those missions trips and through all the difficult challenges that uh, you've gone through this year. It has been so encouraging. And so uh, I'm praying for you and I just really admire how you are a testament to your family. And uh, I know, I can't, I actually can't imagine how it is um, to go through what you've gone through. But Cassandra, um, I just, I'm encouraged, and I'm praying for you, and God's going to do big, great things um, with you and uh, the mentor uh, that he has made you and the gifts that he has given you. Um, so don't doubt that. Don't believe any lies of the enemy. Um, congratulations. <laughs> um, I love you. Hey, Cassandra. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you up there. It's so exciting. Oh, just kind of like watching you grow through the years from like how you were when you first came here to now. So this is like night and day. Like you're such an amazing, strong woman. And I'm just so happy that you're taking this next step. And I have a verse for you. Psalm 56, 3 to 4. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I will praise God for what he has promised. I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? So I just encourage you to keep putting your trust in God and have faith that he will carry you through anything. Love you. Yo, Cassie. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Cassandra and I have kind of a back and forth kind of, you know, thing where uh, I don't even know how to describe it. We kind of just diss each other, but it's all out of kind of a weird kind of friendship. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I used to be roommates with John and she came over all the time. So she was like my second roommate. Um, but yeah, Cassie, you have been, yeah, a really good um, testament of, of Christ for sure in my life and trying to, you know, come alongside me and try and, um, you know, have me stretch and be uh, better morally and also just mature. And uh, yeah, it, it kind of worked a little bit and I still hear you in my head every now and then. Um, so yeah, thank you for that, and I know that God's going to really use that kind of, that, that, uh, Cassiness for, for the glory of his kingdom, and yeah, wherever he leads you. Hi, Cassandra. Um, if anyone doesn't know, I'm one of the great night girls she, I guess, teaches at youth group. Um, Cassandra, you're a really amazing youth, um, leader. And I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait to see you walk with the Lord. Hi, Cassandra. Um, I just want to thank you for being a great uh, inspiration and uh, speaking into my son's life and being a great friend, um, uh, you and John. Um, 
and uh, I just, uh, my heart goes out to you. I was praying for you and your father when I heard about your father, and I'm glad that he's doing well. Praise the Lord. And uh, I, congratulations on your upcoming marriage, and I just want to encourage you um, from Philippines uh, uh, 3, um, verse 19. I want, um, uh, sorry, verse 12. Uh, pressing on towards the goal. Um, I want to encourage you to press on to the goal. Not only that I've already attained this, but you already be been perfect. But press on to take on a uh, hold of what Christ Jesus took a hold of me. Um, press on towards your goal and win the prize for which God has called um, the heaven, heaven word in Jesus Christ. So that's your ultimate goal, and I'm glad that you're pursuing it through Vanguard and um, through, through here, through this church. God bless. I'm just going to take a quick opportunity to cut my dad off for the first time. So, um, but um, <laughs> when, when Peter spoke for Alice and Cassandra leaned over and said, are you going to do that? So I kind of have to. Now. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, it, it's been really encouraging to see how much you've grown in the past year, and I didn't want to do this because I knew I was going to start crying, so, um, but I'm really excited for um, being able to marry you and, and keep pushing you towards Christ for the rest of our lives and keep dragging you to church as much as we need to, but I'm um, really proud of you, and congratulations. Am I allowed to talk now, John? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, Cassandra, this is awesome. Romans chapter 6, Paul says, Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And then he says this verse, If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. In 13 days, you're going to be united to this guy in marriage. <laughs> but our encouragement to you today is to never forget the importance of this timing. That first, you are united with Christ, and then you are united with John. We are very proud of you. We are so proud of the journey you've been on and the way you have leaned in with God as he has challenged you. We love you. We are so excited for this day and the day that is yet to come and the many days that will follow. And I want to pray for you from the words of Paul at the end of Ephesians chapter 3. <coughs> Father God, thank you for Cassandra. Thank you for who she is, who you have designed her to be, and who you are making her to be. And I pray that out of your glorious riches, you will strengthen her with power through your spirit in her inner being so that Christ may dwell in her heart through faith. And I pray that Cassandra will be rooted and established in your love and may have the power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Jesus Christ and that she will know this love that surpasses knowledge and that she will be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So, Father, fill her by your Spirit. Continue to do in her what you have planned to do so that you can continue to do through her what you have great joy to do. We pray your blessing on her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cassandra, I've got a few questions for you. Okay. Have you repented of your sin, and are you seeking to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you renounce the devil and all of his works? Yes. Is it your desire to die to self and live in the power of the Spirit? Yes. Then it is with great joy upon the profession of your faith, Cassandra, that John, your pre-husband, is going to baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God! Come on up.
up, Cheryl. We save the best for last, right? Now, Cheryl has been on the docket, ready to be baptized for a while here, and she said, there's some mobility issues here. Can we, somehow, can we do this baptism? So we're going to see here in a moment how we've done this. It's on video. Uh, but Cheryl is no stranger here, and uh, she's going to share a bit of a story of what God is do- doing and has done in her life. And then if you want to say any words again, you can line up there and by the microphone. Does that work? Oh, yes. You can take your mask off there. Oh, hello. (laughs) I started my journey in a really sweet way. It was totally unexpected. She was 10 years old. And just cute, smart, talented, and... Apparently, she's very much like her father. I've, I've really not known Grace. So, um, But uh, I think it was because she was raised knowing and loving God that she had such a gentle manner. And I was hooked. She walked into the building with her mom. She wore a smile and carried a decorated plate of homemade cookies. And she gave me an invitation. So I accepted the invitation, shared the cookies with the people in the room, and I attended Easter Sunday service. And that was like three years ago, four years ago, I can't remember. Um, um, Shortly after that, I attended service, and I was sitting at the back of the church and just lost in my own thoughts as the church filled up with people. And Pastor Brent started the service. And when he started to give the message, I realized he was talking to me. It was directed at me. So when I left the service, it tagged along with me. It came home with me. And all day Sunday, it was on my mind. So I was thinking about what he, the, the message that he had shared with us that morning. But it kept popping up every day, all week. And I thought, okay, something's going on here. I don't know what it is, but something's going on. I kept thinking about it over and over and over. And something, I felt something happened to me. I don't know, something shifted, something changed. I don't know. I can't prove it. All I know is I felt different. I don't know when it happened, how it happened, I don't know. But with that new feeling that I had, I wasn't arrogant in my ignorance of Jesus. I didn't want to be like that. I wanted to know Jesus and to follow God. So you're responsible for this, too. (laughs) Again, what Josh said, I didn't Um, do anything. But... um, So I started to attend study groups. Oh, I just, I love them. The people of this church are magnificent. There are days, because I'm a new believer, at my age, I'm a new believer, um, if somebody had asked me what that text was that changed my life, at my age, I couldn't tell you. I have no idea. I just think it was a catalyst for what was to come after and make me who I am today, hopefully better. I started attending these groups, study groups, Alpha and and Bible study and small group, and I met some incredible people. And their kindness and their consideration, when I'd be so far off track of what I read, it just made it less frustrating and enabled me to continue with my path, my journey to find about God. Um, I learned to pray when I was 11. I lived in a convent for a year and a half while my mother finished her nursing training. She lived downtown Edmonton at the Old Miz. She had to live in residence. We lived on the south side at the O'Connell Institute is uh, currently the 
Catholic Archdiocese of Edmonton, same piece of land, just they removed buildings. But we knew we were safe there. And the first night, one of the nuns, that was a culture shock. We came from a small town, I didn't know nuns. But um, she came up and she asked us, or asked me rather, what I thought of when I prayed. While well, my answer was honest, it definitely didn't impress her. <laughs> she said, um, that's not how you pray, this is how you pray. So when I left the convent, I, had, I learned a lot of things, but I learned two things that have never left me. I learned how to pray, and I learned you never make a deal with God when you pray. So um, I prayed lots, and um, I think I'm just going to skip the next part. <laughs> um, but I have decided through prayer and through these study groups and just coming to church that I want to commit my life to finding out more about God. And because I've met such wonderful people here in this church, haven't met them all, but the ones I've met have impressed me, I have decided that all of his teachings, all of his messages and his laws are all in a Bible. So all I have to do is open my Bible and call a friend if I get confused. Thank you. <clears throat> you had all those notes and you didn't even look at them. I'm sorry? You had all those notes and you didn't even look at them. I well, didn't even well look at done. them. But I just did, to, I've been doing this for two months. So. Just to connect the dots, the 10-year-old the, the little girl with the cookies is, is Natalie Forsyth. Yes. And she's going to be the one that speaks at the end yes. and prays for you. Yes, thank you. So that's cool. Anyway, Charles. Oh, mercy. Peace be with you, Cheryl. Can you take your... I can't understand you. With Peace be with you. So we met at the Alpha course, and uh, we were both new believers, and she encouraged me through her curiosity and her... her gentle nature and her her love of art she creates these amazing bookmarks so if you haven't hit her up already do it every time i open up my bible your bookmark is the only one i see and on the back of it you put a psalm and you put a very inspirational picture on the front i want to thank you for that and i want to encourage you through reading your bible every day praying to him and thanking him for what we have and how we can grow and love each other and be brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you very much for meeting you. Thank you, Charles. Good day. So Cecile's unable to be here this morning, so she sent me uh, what she would like to share with you. The name Cheryl means many things to many different people. For example, she is a true friend, a great mother and grandmother, sister, aunt, a God-loving person, one of the most generous people I know, and my sister in Christ. In the book of names, it says her name comes from a French and Greek origin. It means cherry fruit and green gemstone. Now, imagine Cecile's voice in your head. I know Cheryl, she says, and she laughed at that too. <laughs> to me, Cheryl is like a sponge that soaks up any and all information concerning God, the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and anything to learn about our church. She is in our Wednesday morning small group, always full of questions, participating in discussions, and keeping us not only on our toes, Cecile especially, but genuinely loves everything she is learning. Cheryl, I'm so very proud of you for taking the step of obedience. Just remember what our Father proclaimed from Jeremiah 29, 11, and 12, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. I love you, my friend. Thank you for attending Alpha and um, the ladies' Bible study that we had that Kelly and I ran as well. Um, it's been amazing getting to know you and to see your thirst 
and your hunger is awesome. So I'm proud of you today. Good job. Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> it's so nice to see you in person again. I miss you. <laughs> I wanted to tell you that the, you used the word gentle in your testimony with, towards somebody else, and I wanted to tell you that you have that gentle love as well, and you exhibit to it to everybody who you are in contact with, and that is the love of Jesus in you. And I just am so blessed to be a participant of that, and I just am praying for you, and I'm so happy for you for taking this step. And it's so nice to see you again. Congratulations. <laughs> Hi, Cheryl. I'm good. Um, I just wanted to say what a blessing it's been to know you. And when I came to this church two years ago, you were one of the first women that I got to meet. And you just made me feel so welcome and made it such a positive experience and really allowed it so that it gave me the courage to go out and meet new people in the church as well. And you just have God's love in you so much and it's such, it's so amazing to see and it's amazing to see how God uses your, your artwork to put smiles on everybody's faces and all the inspiring words that you write to us, and uh, just the way you are. So I'm so happy for you to finally be able to do this, because I know you've been wanting to do it for a while, and I'm so blessed to call you sister. Hi, sir. Hi, Cheryl. I miss you. I miss the times that we used to uh, spend together on Friday nights um, at Cecile's, and um, and I missed the banter that you and Cecile had together. You guys made me laugh, and you know it's so good to laugh. And um, and then your your kindness and your, your consideration, um, your concern over my father-in-law when he went in the hospital, uh, your encouragement and your prayers with for him, and um, it just was a blessing to me. Uh, you were a blessing to me. I, I'm proud to call you my friend, and um, the angels are rejoicing, and I'm rejoicing that you, you took this step. And I know in our groups you were talking a while about it, and um, everyone was talking about your hunger and your questions, and and uh, that you, even though you've came to Christ and later in life, that you still um, were able, you wanted to learn more, and you still want to learn more. So congratulations on finally able to take this step. And I just want to read um, an encouragement of uh, that the Lord is rejoicing. Uh, Philippians 4, uh, verse, um, verse 4, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. I will always, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness um, be evident to all. The Lord is near. So just remember that. God bless. Hi, Cheryl. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. Your baptism is a step of obedience, a leap of faith, and a walk with the Lord that will last forever. Trust in his timing, rely on his promises, wait for his answers, Believe in his miracles, rejoice in his goodness, and relax in his presence. In Psalm 139, it states that you are a child of God. You are wonderfully made. You are dearly loved and precious in his sight. And I just pray that Lord surrounds you with his goodness and leads you in his light always. Lord, I ask you to help Cheryl walk in the path that you've chosen for her and guide her in, in your steps always. Hey, Mom. 
Therese used the word obedience. It's one we don't generally hear with Cheryl. Um, no. <laughs> when I started coming to church, I never knew if you'd ever take this step. I don't know if you'd ever take a step in the church. You grew up with a warped sense, not of your own, but of what religion is and what God is and how Jesus is. And I'm really glad that you're to a point today where you feel the need and the desire to walk with him. I'm happy, Mom. Thank you. Hi, Miss Cheryl. Okay. Um, I'm so happy that you decided to take this huge step in your faith. If you can't hear me. <laughs> okay. I'm so happy that you decided to take this huge step in your faith today. I want to congratulate you and thank you for being a part of my life. Before I pray, I would like to read some scripture for you. So I picked Numbers 6, 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Hmm. I hope this verse can be a blessing for you. Now I'd like to pray. <laughs> Dear God, thank you for everything you bless us with, Lord. I thank you for Miss Cheryl and the choice she has made today for deciding to be born again in you, Lord. I just pray, pray a blessing over her. I pray that she'll continue to walk with you in her faith and that she'll be able to spread the word to other people that need to hear it, Lord. I ask you that you will shine your face on her and be gracious to her and give her peace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Adina, I'm gonna ask you to get the lights and everyone direct your attention to the screen. All right, Cheryl, have you repented of your sin, and are you seeking to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you renounce Satan and his works? Definitely, yes. Is it your desire to die to self and live in the power of the Spirit? Yes. All right. Upon the profession of your faith, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I never grew up in the church. My family were and are non-believers, but always had a hunger for Christ. As a young child, I attended Pioneer Girls here in Sturgeon Alliance Church with Sheila Redlick's daughter, Jacqueline. That was in the late 80s. I loved it. I remember trying to attend Sunday school on my own, but was turned away. Around the age of 14, life got hard. My mom lost her dad. She took it hard. She mourned the loss of her dad by drinking. We went on holidays that summer, and my mom tried to commit suicide. Alcohol became her crutch, her way of dealing with things. She always drank. There was never a sober holiday around my house. They always ended in arguing and fighting. She attempted suicide five or six more times throughout the years. The last and final attempt was March 28, 2007. She was successful. The last thing I said to my mom was, don't ever call me again until you are sober. I was 27 years old and a newly single parent. Jordan was two and Jeremy was five months old. At this time in my life, I was already at an all-time low. My ex, the boys' bio dad, had cheated on me and fell in love with someone else and was expecting a child with her. He, too, used alcohol very frequently. At this point, all I focused on was Jordan and Jeremy. Jeremy was a sick baby. Jordan and I spent many nights at the ER with, ER with him. They could never figure out what was wrong with him. We are still trying to figure it all out. I worked as a heavy-duty parts technician and cared for my boys. Bio dad was never around. I had my dad to call, but things were hard for him, too. Life carried on like this for the next three years, weekly trips to the ER and working a full-time job. I felt empty. It was 2010 that I met Mike, Zach, and Sam. They attended the same daycare as my boys. I knew by my short interactions with Mike that there was something different about him. I now know that the difference is he had Christ in his heart. We started to attend church with him soon after dating. Fast forward a year and a half later, we married. Life was good. I was yet to accept Christ into my heart at this time. As our family grew, my love for Christ grew. It was about five years ago we hit some really tough times. It tore me apart. I felt the hurt that I've never felt before. It nearly tore my family apart. Almost destroyed my marriage. We were attending Sturgeon Alliance at this time. We walked away from the church and life got really bad. It devastated my whole family. The devil was winning. 
we prayerfully decided we needed to go back to church. We started to attend Mike's old church in Edmonton again, as nice as it was, we missed it here. After meeting with a few of the elders and their wives, we decided to come back. As hard as it was, I'm so glad we did. We have an amazing church body here and I don't know where I'd be without it. It was then that I fully accepted Jesus into my heart. We attended an awesome small group. We attend an awesome small group and it may not be much of a contributing factor to the group, I really enjoy it. I still struggle with some of my past, hurt from my mom, hurt from watching people I love or love drink. I have a hard time trusting people and don't, don't open up very often, but I'm getting better. I'm learning how to do this. I now can see Jesus' presence in the hard times of my life, even at the time I didn't know it. Wow. Thank you. That took a lot of courage. Thank you for sharing that. If you would like to say a word of encouragement now or a word uh, scripture, I encourage you to come on up to the front here. I will say too, I'm just going to move this back so that they can actually see. Uh, I will say too that the last person that's going to share is uh, for the candidate is someone that's uh, sig uh, has, has been spiritually significant in their journey. That's kind of helped them along. And so that's, the, the candidate has selected that person at the end to pray for them. So are you guys going to come up and share? Hey, Sarah. I'm so proud that you're doing this. Um, I know it's a huge step for you to stand up here and do this, so um, I have a verse here for you. Um, Jer Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm just going to try and read this. Uh, okay. Um, for I know the plans I have for you. Um, oh my goodness, I can't read this declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, uh, plans to give you hope in a future. There will be, um, plans to give you hope in a future. And I just wanted to remind you that God has plans for you and he will grow you and strengthen you. And you just have to take that next step. And it's one step at a time. And I'm really proud for you uh, of you for doing this. Thank you. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. I've been praying for you all weekend for this. <laughs> um, I do have a verse for you as well. Um, Psalm 31, verse 24. So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. I just want to let you know that uh, I know that this was a huge step for you, and I just keep praying that you keep having the courage and the faith to keep putting your hope in the Lord Jesus. Um, he's not done with you. This is just the beginning, and I am just getting the most joy out of getting to know you more and serving with you, and just know that the Lord shines through you. I've taken my mask off. Um, Sarah, you are, uh, Sarah's a part, and uh, Mike, of our small group, and you are not an insignificant part of our group. You are a huge part, and we love you and have really grown to just uh, um, care for you as we get to know you more and more this last year and even the last few years. And I appreciate your tender heart your sensitive kindness to others and compassion. And it's good for me to connect with you and to be challenged and growing in that. And so don't doubt yourself of what God has gifted you with. He has given you some great gifts. And uh, I just look forward to what God's gonna do in and through your life as you keep trusting and obeying. We kind of laugh about this song that we've known since we were kids, trust and obey for there's no other way <laughs> to be happy in Jesus. <laughs> and we just, we have kindred hearts that way of just laughing of how God stretches us. And, and it is, our walk is about trusting and obeying God of whatever he asks us to do. And so I just want to encourage you knowing that you are loved that we pray for you. And I was just uh, excited and just feel 
um, I guess just encouraged and moved by your wanting to continue and just obeying God and following him and in, in baptism and just I knew it took uh, great courage for you to come up and and to do this too so way to go and we're cheering you on and the verse I want to just keep giving you I know I'm pretty sure I've given it to you before it's one of my favorites but it's from Isaiah 26 3 and 4 and it just has such profound like solid truth in there you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you and whose thoughts are fixed on you Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. And he will be your rock as you continue to trust him and allow his peace to guard your heart and your mind. Right? All right. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I just uh, thank you so much. What a privilege it is to come and to witness people being baptized today, God, that they want to follow you with all of their heart. And I just pray that you would just continue to place your hand of blessing and encouragement upon Sarah, reminding her that you are with her each and every day, God, that you are the sovereign Lord who knows all things and is in control and the owner of everything, and that you will supply all that she needs, Lord, as she walks through each day just desiring to trust you and to obey. Give her that power and that desire to do what pleases you, God. Help her to have the will to keep her eyes on you and her heart soft towards you that you can mold her and grow her and shape her into the woman you want her to be, God. Help her to love you with all of her heart, all of her soul, all of her mind, all of her strength and to just walk humbly with you one day at a time. Equip her with all that she needs, and may your peace continue to guard her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus, that she just takes every thought captive, God, and just gives it back to you and trusts in your promises of who you are. Just bless her this day, watch over her and Mike, and just protect them and their family. And just encourage her by the love of your people and by your great love. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for us. And I just pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Amen. Well, Mike's going to baptize you. I am going to ask you three questions. And these questions are going to make a public declaration of your faith today. But you can live out the answers to these questions every day from here on. And these are good also for us to remind ourselves of what it means for us to live out our faith as well. All right. First question is, have you repented of your sin and are you seeking to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you renounce the devil and his works? Yes. Is it your desire to die to self and then live in the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay. Upon the profession of your faith, Mike is going to baptize you in the name of the Father, and then the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory. Okay. I was born and raised in a Christian home, baptized as an infant. I attended church and all the classes to go with that during my childhood. I professed my faith in God as a young adult in the CRC church. As I moved away from home, my life changed. My attendance of church became more and more spotty. I had secrets from my past that caught up with me and I ended up in trouble. I never thought God would accept or forgive me for the things I had done. I ended up running away from my problems and continued to live my life like they were done and over. I attended church again with my new family. Soon my world fell apart again. My marriage fell apart and my children were taken away from me. I fought hard to change my life and a year later I managed to get my kids back. Now living as a single father with two young children, life was tough again. I ended up meeting someone new and remarried starting a blended family together with Sarah and her boys. 
attending church and living our lives until parts of my past came back and blew up in my face again. This really put my beliefs to the test. I knew there was a God, and I knew he loved me and my family. What I struggled with was why God would bring up my past and ruin my current life. My past not only hurt me, but my wife and kids as well, even though they had nothing to do with it. We as a family left the church again and tried to hide in our small circle of friends and family. I noticed there was something missing in our lives. This was the people and the support of the church. I struggled with the fact that I did not believe I was good enough for God to forgive me. With a lot of prayer and counsel from some of the members of this church, I know by the grace of God I am forgiven. I know with all my heart that God wants me and my family here in this place at this time. I need to reaffirm my love for God and to show others that God loves even the broken and the lost. I am trying to live my life as God wants me to. I'm trying to be the man God knows I can be. I know I will fall short from time to time, but that's okay because I know God will be there for me when I fall. God will give me a hand and help me back up and continue with life with him. God has placed a verse on my heart for a long time. This verse reminds me of the never ending support God has for us if we ask him and when we ask him. Isaiah 40 verse 29 to 31. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Wow. Thanks, Mike. That took a lot of courage, too. Is there anyone that would like to say a word? Oops. Morning, Mike. Sarah. Uh, I, too, was uh, part of a small group at uh, Sarah and, and Mike's place uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, you've come a long way. And uh, again, I, what I want to share with you today is, is uh, Philippians 1, 9 to 11, and it says, I pray that your love will overflow more and more, and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory and praise to God. So stay strong in your faith in God, your love for one another, and for the church family. God bless you both. Thank you. Hey, Mike. It's been wonderful getting to know you guys in, in our small group and just seeing, seeing your heart, which is a beautiful heart. It's an incredible heart. And I'm just going to read Philippians, <clears throat> the end of uh, chapter 4 here. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. As I've got to know you, I see that you've walked that so much, that no matter how ugly and how crazy life is God, and it's what happens as we live, you've always remained faithful to your beliefs, to your Lord. And it is just, it's rewarding just to see that and be a part of that. And I just stand in awe of that so much that you can be so solid in this. And I know sometimes you're struggling, you say you can't be forgiven and all that stuff, but you can. You're wonderfully and beautifully created by the Lord Savior just for a time such as this, for this family that you're with right now. And you're the rock, and you're standing up, and you're leading like the father that you should be, and the husband that you should be. And I thank you for that. It's just been wonderful seeing that happen all the time. Good job, Mike. And it's just an exciting day. It's a day of changes. Thank you. Congratulations, Mike. Where I am so glad that you guys came back to this church. 
Anybody's ever spent time with Mike will know in an instant he's got a servant's heart and whether it's on a roof, repairing roofs, shoveling snow, helping out neighbors, helping out people in this church, you help in an instant. We're glad that you're part of this church. I'd ask you, Mike, a few months ago a question. And the question was, why did Jesus, who was sinless, have to be baptized? And the answer was, and I want to encourage you with this, it's in verse 19 of Matthew uh, chapter 3. Let it be so now, it is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. That is what you're doing now, Mike. You're walking in righteousness, you're walking in obedience with God. And I encourage you to keep doing that. You are doing it, you're an example for many of us around here. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this church body. Thank you for baptisms. Thank you for Mike and for Sarah, particularly for Mike, Lord, that he is a part of our congregation, that he has taken the step of righteousness, the step of obedience to you, Lord. Continue to work in him. Continue to give him the strength to be the rock he is for his family, to be the rock he is in this church, Lord, to be helping out, Lord. And that when he falters, that he can turn to you and that you're there to pick him up again and help him keep walking, Lord, and keep, help him keep walking in that through whatever life brings him. This is asked the most holy name. Amen. Amen. Oh, Mike, this is going to be a first for everyone. You're going to baptize yourself, all right? Like, just like swimming lessons. Just go bob down, head up below the water, all right? Three questions, okay? Have you repented of your sin, and are you seeking to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, do you renounce the devil and his works? I do. Is it your desire to die to self and live in the power of the Spirit? Yes. Upon the profession of your faith, you're going to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, you can grab a seat. I'm going to call Erica up, and you can head on into the tank. This is Erica. Erica is one of our young adults here at Sturgeon Alliance. She's been uh, attending for almost uh, a little over a year and a half, almost two years now. Everyone say, hi, Erica. Hi, Erica. Awesome. Erica, why don't you tell us why you're in the tank, how you came to know Jesus? Pardon? Why, why don't you tell us your testimony? Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm a little off. nervous here. Um, so now before I get into my testimony, I just wanted to say this was the hardest thing I have ever had to write. Um, even though Josh almost gave me a year to write it, I left it till very last minute. Um, so I grew up in a family of non-believers, and the only time I would ever go to church is with my grandma on my dad's side. And it was only because we got a free meal at the end of service, and literally that was the best part of church when I was younger. And... Uh, you see, when I was growing up, I was bullied and mistreated by this world around me, and I never found a place of belonging. And just before coming here, I could honestly say I was lost and no longer felt worthy of life and, and just being here anymore. I was done and ready to take my life, and I had no friends, and I felt like I couldn't really talk to my family a whole lot, and I'd just been diagnosed with celiac disease, which better known as gluten-free. Um, for those who make fun of Stephen, yeah, I'm, I'm the other half of him, <laughs> for the gluten part at least. And the one thing slash animal that meant the world to me had just died. Um, the day that everything changed, I was sitting in Rhonda Jeffrey's dental chair, and uh, I, we started talking, and I finally let out everything that I was holding in, all the tears and all this hatred I had for myself in that moment and I'm pretty sure I got Rhonda's scrub top quite wet because I bawled my eyes out and she was giving me the biggest hug and so I'm pretty sure there was a big puddle in her thing that she had to work with the rest of the day and she's like you know what I got the place for you I know where you need to go you need to go down the road to Surgeon Alliance and you need to go talk to Manick. Manick will set you up with a meeting with Josh and then I got the place for you it's the young adults group they hang out, they talk about God, but they also go do cool activities and you'll make lots of new friends. So as Dr. Singh at the time was checking out my teeth, she runs to the phone and she calls up Manik and she's like, Manik, I'm sending you somebody. He's like, don't leave the church. 
And so, you know, a little bit later, I come into the church and Manik looks at me and I tell her that, well, I need to talk to somebody named Josh and about the young adults group. And a couple days later, I get a call from Josh and he's like, hey, I want to meet up with you face to face. And a few days after that, I got, I sat down with Josh and we talked and he told me all about the young adults group and how, you know, we come together every Sunday night and we hang out and get lots of laughs and giggles. And this year it was Mandalorian pre-COVID mix up where we could actually stay a little later. And uh, yeah, when we were done talking though, Josh asked if he could pray over me. Now, when I first came in, I said to Josh, I'm not a really big believer in God. And he's like, that's okay, but I'd still like to pray with you over you. Is that okay? And I said, sure. Now, something Josh didn't know up until probably two weeks ago is when he was praying over me, I felt this, peace, this place of calm and peace come over me. It was a weird sensation I have never felt since. And I left the church knowing I needed to see where this was going to go. And a few weeks later, young adults started. I walked into the church scared and unsure of what the young adults would think of me as a non-believer. The first person I met was Stephanie Zelinstra, and to be honest, she became one of my best friends. She made me feel safe in a place where I wasn't sure I was going to feel that. And she's one of my best friends, and it's really hard going to see her leaving here in a few weeks. It's, it's going to be a lot of tears. I started coming and meeting the regulars, and as that went on, I kept coming back and back. And when COVID hit, it was hard. It was a struggle. But I still tuned in every Sunday on Zoom, and, and when we could, Steph and I would get together and go horseback riding or kayaking, and we kept just trying to make life feel normal. And uh, the best part about the young adults, though, is that they never make you feel dumb, never made me feel dumb for not knowing the Bible or asking them to explain more and all that. A year and a half later, I'm standing here getting ready to be baptized. I don't know what ha God has in store for me, but I do know that I'm going to keep trying. I'm not perfect, and I've asked God to forgive me for everything that I've done wrong. I've asked him to love me for who I am, even though we're going to come to having disagreements. When I first started coming to this church, though, we were in Revelation, and... Pastor Brent, you're amazing, but when you say, you know, back in the Old Testimony, I didn't know, but, you know, everybody's shaking their head yes, and I'm going, um, okay, sure, yeah, I know, yeah, not really. <laughs> but he comes to Revelation 3, and he's reading it, and he comes to number, verse number 11, and starts off by saying, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have, so that no one will take your crown. In that moment, I just about cried. I had let everybody in my life take my crown away from me, and I didn't know how to be better. I always stood up for those people who were bullied. I stood up for other people. I was always there to give a helping hand. I would help without even being asked and always strive to be better. In that moment, I knew I needed to stay a little longer. And as time went on, slowly and slowly, more things came to it. And I am still here, amazed that a year and a half later, I am here. There was another saying in my Bible that got me in the heart. It says, it was Romans 12, 21. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So I've promised myself that no matter what, I will do better, and I will never let evil conquer me. Even though I have depression and I let those demons in, I will do my best to keep them out knowing that I have friends in the amazing young adults group that will always be by my side. I am thankful for Josh for allowing me into his group because without him, I don't know where I'd be. Thanks for sharing, Erica. Um, just to affirm you, I don't have anything to do with it. Jesus let you in. <laughs> and, and he's doing a mighty work in you, and it's just so, so awesome to see. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So... Um, Whoever, I know Rhonda's going to close for, for Erica, but whoever would like to come share at the mic, go ahead. Hey, Erica. 
Hi, Dalton. Hey. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say, like, I, I've kind of, like, known about you, and we've known each other for a long time, like, since back to Gibbons School. And so when I saw you, uh, yeah, a little while ago, last year and a half, come to here, I was like, yeah, that's pretty um, awesome. And I just wanted to speak to, like, how amazing this is that, yeah, God has put you here that you're here without your biological family, but you're still here with now your family in Christ, the body of Christ. And that's the whole, that, that, that's, that's the meat and potatoes of it all, is that you're still here despite leaving all that comfort. And like home life is probably not the greatest, but you know, like, there's like the saying that home, home is where the heart is. Well, home is where Jesus is. And so really, honestly, you're making the best choice ever. And yeah, you're very vocal as well. And that is a very, very good thing. And just make sure that like when you're vocal, that it's with the words of Christ. Thank you. More and more. And yeah. Thank you, Dalton. Hey, pretty lady. Hey, staff. <laughs> <laughs> I am so, so excited for you today. I'm so happy you're up there. Oh, uh, oh man. It has just been so good to get to know you over the last, like, was it year and a half, two years? Time flies, man. We've had so many good adventures together, and I'm so excited to just have watched you grow in your relationship with God and all your awesome questions and how you make all of us at small group think. <laughs> Way to go. Good job. And you just have such a big heart for everyone, and I love that about you. And I just want you to remember that God has an even bigger heart for you. He loves you so much, and I just have a verse for you. Romans 8, 37 to... 39. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thank you. Love you, dear. Hi, Erica. Hi. Um, <clears throat> so those of you, one expression of Erica's caring for everybody, I don't know if you know, but at our young adults group, she made every single one of us this like awesome, what is it even, like crochet or? Cross stitch. Cross stitch. She cross stitched a bookmark for every single person in our young adults group. Even, even when Liana came later, she made one for her. I just think that's a really cool expression of how caring you are. And I'm excited to see what God can do with a heart that's open like yours. Um, I just have a psalm that I want to share just from Psalm 1. I'm going to paraphrase it for you. Okay. <clears throat> Blessed is the woman who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But her delight is in the word of the Lord, and on his word she meditates, meditates day and night. She is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever she does prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And uh, I just wanted to encourage you that the Lord watches over you, and I want to encourage you to make his words your delight. And uh, doing that, uh, you will be fruitful. So Thank it's really cool to see you. Thanks, Greg. Hey, Erica. Hi, Amy. <laughs> so, uh, Steph stole my verse, so I don't have a verse. 
But I just wanted to tell you that I think you're the most caring person ever. You've only been here for like a year and a half and you're already like one of my top, top tier friends. So I'm so glad to know you. And it's been such a pleasure getting to know you. And I just wanted to tell you that because you're doing this, this is your declaration of nobody can take that crown from you. Nothing, nobody, nothing can separate you from that love that God has for you. I'm so, so glad to know you, and I'm so proud to be your friend, and I'm so excited for you. Thanks. Hey, Erica. Hi, Rhonda. My sweet Erica. <laughs> you are such a blessing, and we are all better now that we have you in our life. I am so proud of you. You are so brave. You are smart and beautiful. You are amazing. And you no longer will suffer the bully because you are a child of God. God loves you and he put you in my path and I am so thankful and I feel so blessed to have met you that morning in my chair. I'm so thankful that you did come to the church, you spoke with Monique, and the prayers that Josh prayed over you was just the beginning of your journey. You are so amazing and so loving and so caring. Your heart is overflowing with love and joy, and it just brings me such peace to see you in the in the bath today i am so proud of you your journey has been such a blessing to be part of to watch and we are so happy to see that smile on your face you have blossomed in your faith you are so obedient and strong and a verse that came to me the day that i saw you in walmart and you shared with me that you were going to be baptized. I was overjoyed. We were yelling hallelujah in Walmart in the back aisle of the seasonal. Yeah, I was that there was our... looking for a blow up snowman. Yeah, that was a Christmas time. Yeah. <laughs> we were hugging and jumping and crying and laughing. And that is such a great memory. It's the first of all the memories that you will share with the Lord. A verse that come to me is putting on the whole armor of God. So I want to read Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. A final word, be strong in the Lord, in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on a piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will sit and be still, you will still be standing firm Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from God, from God's news, so that you will be fully prepared. Put the salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit in all times. And on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for the believers everywhere. Erica, you have God's armor, every piece of armor on you today. The Holy Spirit has filled your heart, and I am so thankful. I would like to pray for you now, Erica. Lord, I thank you for bringing Erica to our church body. We are so blessed to have her here. Lord, I thank you for bringing her parents here today 
to share in this big step. Lord, I thank you for the young adults group, for all the friends that Erica has made. Her life is complete, full of joy and love. And we see that in her smile every day, Lord. Lord, I thank you for giving her the courage to die to herself. Lord, I thank you that she is your child. There's no greater gift than to be the child of God. And today she stands in front of all of us to proclaim that love for you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will keep her safe. You will not let her feel that she is dumb or wrong or bullied. Lord, I pray that you will wrap your arms around her and you will be with her every step that she takes. Lord, I know that you have great plans for this young lady. And I am so thankful, Lord, that we get to be a part of that. We get to watch her grow in her faith and her obedience to you, Lord. Lord, I lift her up to you today, and I pray that this big step is the most important day of her life, Lord. And I pray that she will remember this day in all her tomorrows, the joy, the love, the peace that she feels in her heart, the Holy Spirit that has filled her filled her whole heart, Lord. Lord, I lift her up to you and I pray that you will keep her safe and that she will continue to come to you, Lord, when she has doubt or when she feels like she's not enough because she's more than enough. And anybody who knows her knows that. You know that, Lord, and now she knows it. Thank you, Lord. I pray all of this in your son's holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, Erica... I absolutely echo everything that's been said, and it's just been a joy getting to know you, and I'm just so excited for Jesus is leading you. So, you're going to self-baptize as well? Yep. A couple questions. Sure. Have you repented of your sin, and are you seeking to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ? I do. Yes. Do you renounce the devil and his works? Yes. Is it your desire to die to self and live in the power of the Spirit? Yes. And upon the profession of your faith, it's a joy to see you baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> Glory to God!